Hey guys, welcome to Life Out Loud. We are a family of four full-time farmers who have sailed the Bahamas. Link to that over here, though I know that's not why you're here. Today we're giving you a glimpse into our family farm that's on the cutting edge of regenerative agriculture. We share unconventional methods. We've implemented intermittent fasting with these birds. Our philosophies and everything in between. If you are one of the special people who supports our farm, please leave a comment below. We'd love to see you guys there. And if you have any questions, you know where to put them. All right, let's get to the video. When we first get the little chicks, we have to keep them in a warm barn because they're still pretty fragile. But it's not long before we put them out to fresh grass. We need to make sure that that area out there is buttoned down, ready to go. So mm -hmm. we're gonna pull all the feeders out. We're gonna take the feeders down. We're gonna fill the feeders up. We're gonna fill the water up. The last thing we do is get these birds out of here. All right, feeders check. Now we gotta get the waterers up. So the water buckets are dismantled and we have to put them back together. You gotta take them apart. Connect the water hose to the bucket. Tie it on and make sure it's situated for water to flow. So the usual way that we put birds out to pasture is by putting them in these crates. But today we're trying something new by coaxing them into the livestock trailer to see if that is any better. When you put them in the crates like this, sometimes they stub their toes, uh, they get stressed. So what we're hoping is this is gonna be less stressful for them and it's gonna be a lot easier for us too. Wow. How awesome would it be if this works? I mean, how long have I been working on it? About an hour and a half? If my theory is very simple, even if it fails, it's worth a try, but I'm really starting to think that they're just, they're gonna, I don't know, it's worth a try. Let's go. So check out all of these field peas and kale that dad planted as a cover crop. They get to eat all of this. These are gonna be some happy birds. Come on birds. This is our first of the season and we had some pretty heavy duty trials at first with the weather. The weather was very, very difficult to manage. But this is the end result of a management change that we made this season. So the way they look right now, and you can see the vitality, they're running, they're jumping. That vitality is the first sign of what that bird's gonna look like on the dinner plate. You can see their, their combs are bright red. When you go in those big industrial barns, man, you gotta kick them aside. You're gonna step on them. These guys are hard to catch. By all standards of practices, we are underfeeding these birds. They can and would eat way more than what we're giving them. But what ends up happening is they grow so fast. Their internal organs and their joints doesn't keep up with the rate their muscles are growing. And they start to get really sluggish. And my theory is really simple. If I'm overweight, laying on a couch and I can't move really well. My organs, my flesh, everything, it's not healthy. But if I'm out and I'm moving and I'm exercising and I'm getting around while well, my heart's in shape, my vascular system's working, everything's working and my body isn't loaded with toxicity. Same applies to these birds. We've implemented intermittent fasting with these birds and we've underfed them in order to have a healthier bird. These birds right here are 
absolutely exceptionally healthy, exceptionally vibrant. This I'm proud of. And I assure you of this, when the goal is excellence at every step, money is a byproduct. Money is a byproduct of doing something else really, really well. And that's a philosophy that we have lived by for a long time. When money becomes a goal, you never have enough. When money is a byproduct of something that you do really well, you always have enough. There's, there's, there's always enough to do more of it. Sun is up, and we are too. Time for morning chores. And these guys are the first that we take care of. It's pretty much the same every morning. We fill their feeders with fresh grain, make sure their waters are full, and move the shelters to fresh grass. We use portable fencing to keep predators out and make sure our guard dogs don't run away. I think we can all agree that morning chores is one of our favorite ways to spend our morning together as a family. But all good things come to an end. It's 3.45 a.m. and we all woke up at 3. Coffee's essential. Around 4, we're gonna go out, collect up the birds, and we put them on the trailer, take them over to the workshop, and then get everything else ready. Yesterday, everything got set up. Morgan did most of that. We gotta spray everything down, get our aprons on, get all of the knives sharpened, get the scalder hot. So the way everything's going to go today is catch, butcher, eviscerate, then we pack them up, and then tomorrow, we're gonna sell them. So you guys have probably seen this before if you've seen our chicken butcher day. If not, we'll link it in the description below. We're showing this again because this comes full circle for our passion for poultry video. This is from the day we get the chicks until the day we sell them. Pretty much the circle of life. It's uh, 10 till, so I'd better get going. This isn't something that we have to do. This is something we get to do. I sure as hell hope I'm doing this when I'm 80 years old. I sure as hell hope I am. That means I've got the body to do it. That means I've got the mind and the people around me to do it. All right. Ready to go. Our real passion here has very little to do with growing bigger or being faster. Our intent is to grow better and everything we do is geared around growing a better chicken, being a better steward of the land to raise a better chicken. So when we butcher today, uh, we have some pretty high throughput and it's a very efficient operation, but at the end of the day, everything is geared towards the quality and the product. The birds that are left out on pasture, well, they're going to get a nice breakfast here shortly. So on butcher days, I have a little bit of a different job. While everybody is up there doing the chickens, I'm running around the farm doing the morning chores and making sure that all of the other animals that we have are good for the morning. So let's take care of the broilers. Oh, and you're such a good boy. Oh, the birds are coming around, so I guess I got to feed them. My passion for poultry is knowing that I work as hard as I can to give these animals the most amazing life that they can have and to see them every day, see them running around and to know that I have a part in this and that I have a part in their lives is truly humbling for me. To do this every day, it'll never get old for me. Poultry's cool, man. Back at the workshop, we were all working together to clean up 
and package the birds, only to transition to our favorite part, selling. We don't love handout day just because we get paid for all of our hard work. Sure, we need money to keep the lights on. You can't trade sausages for electricity. But we love it because we get to see the people who support us. Meeting and creating relationships with the people that we help feed makes it all worth it. I know that sounds cheesy, but we truly love what we do. And it's these folks who make it all possible. The beauty of our farm is inspiring, but what fills it up? These happy birds is what gets us up in the morning. We have the responsibility to care for the least of these and to provide the best life possible. Not bigger profit margins, not bigger faster, but to do the best we know how. Because it's not just these animals that rely on us. It's our community, our land, and our future. It was Eleanor Roosevelt who once said, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Our dream is to leave our community our land, and its future better than how we found it. Thank you if you are one of the special people who supports our dream. Back in the Bahamas, Morgan's boyfriend Logan comes to stay with us for an entire week. We go back to Long Island, and every island party gets better and better. We're on five fish now. It's insane! Finally, we reflect on the theme of our entire trip. The kindness of strangers. <laughs> Here's what you missed. Subscribe to the channel 